So, I mean, I mean, as soon as you came on, I'm thinking, no, oh, like, you're so beautiful, man. It's unreal. Man, thank you. And I just, in my mind, I'm like, I'm not even able to be as dressed up as I'd want to be. But this is one of me just in my very, like, natural. Listen, natural. listen, can I tell you something? Even in your natural, like, I would still say yes. <laughs> thank, you. thank you thank you thank you so much i mean how are you darling i mean it's been a long time it's been a couple of years i mean how are you keeping at the moment do you know i'm actually really really good i'm in a very great place um i'm excited because of, are we recording by the way yeah we are oh okay i'm just so, using a different program for this okay okay so um a few days ago i was able to release my single yes. um the first single in around um i want to say eight months i did release something during the pandemic but honestly it was to just throw something out there this i really worked hard on it and i'm so excited for this place i'm in musically because um in this song in particular, Can't Give You a Try, I was able to merge both worlds, um, the singing world and the, my Jamaican world. Right. And you know, people ask, why would you separate them? Well, I grew up in both America and Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And so I always felt like I had to choose between one or the other. So in Bubble, the last time we met was over Bubble. Bubble was very right. dancehall. Yeah. Right? And so I always felt I need to get to a place where I can have both of them coexisting. So with this song, I was able to flip Sizzla's song, Give Me a Try, um, represent the woman's voice mm. by, you know, giving them power, say, encouraging them to take their power back after a bad relationship mm. while incorporating like the American linguas and the Jamaica lingua. Mm. And so I'm excited for this to be my introduction because we have six weeks from now another song dropping. Like for this oh, year, wow. every week I'm dropping, every six weeks I'm dropping new music. Wow. So this is okay. the intro, to be honest. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of it you kind of said in what I was going to ask you already, but we're going to follow up with all that stuff later on in terms of uh, Can't Give You a Try, because that uh, what I was going to ask first, actually, was in between Can't Give You a Try and there was like two other tracks that you did. I think it was one in late 2019. Um, and in between times, obviously, the pandemic, we haven't seen much of you as far as music videos. Has it been difficult to be in like a creative space during this whole madness of a pandemic? So at first it was extremely difficult. I couldn't, I couldn't find my footing. I was telling people I did, I did even several interviews at that time when I was explaining that I cannot get, I cannot create right now. I'm busy trying to maintain my mental, you mm. know, because it's a whole new experience. Mm. Um, but I think after I, got a bit integrated into that space and our new norm. Mm. Uh, and plus, I think it provided me with enough uh, emotion. Mm. I, say. I was able to channel that into writing. Um, the pandemic for me had me sit with like a lot of truths that possibly I wasn't trying to face before, or, you know, or certain realities. Mm. Um, whether it means maybe that breakup you thought you got over, but you didn't in fact get over it. Right. You know, or maybe that thing that happened to you five years ago, you know, that you felt a way about. I was able to sit with all those feelings and channel it into this new body of work. Mm. And I actually told myself when I was writing these songs that I'm no longer going to write for people and what is supposed to sell. I'm going to write from what's true to me. And if it means that you don't like it, then you don't, you just press fast forward next, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, for me, I've had no reason to fast forward on you. Um, I mean, again, we're going to go into a lot of your musical journey up until this point, as far as from the last time we spoke to you till now. But mm -hmm. first things first, I mean, you know, at time of recording, I mean, yesterday was Valentine's Day. Um, mm -hmm. I saw your stories and I was, I was just like, oh, my heart. <laughs> I was like, my heart. I think you like you were just slaying like no girl's business. I was to the point I'm like, how can a girl be this fine? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I mean, you know, with all of that, you must have had a Valentine yesterday. You must have. I didn't. I didn't have a Valentine's. A lot of us didn't. R really? A lot of us didn't have Valentine's. No. What? Yeah. Wow. I, 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 I haven't had a Valentine's in like seven years, actually. 
that is that is shopping i get flowers and stuff from people and that's nice but like the actual like valentine i haven't had that in like seven years wow and so if you did follow my instagram yesterday you saw that i did like a mini skit yes i I did see that it was for a lot of girls who who are single ladies out there, you know what I mean, doing yeah, their thing like, and stuff. Yeah, you know, some girls were really triggered yesterday or felt very sad because it's Valentine's Day and we're in a new space where everyone shows what they have. Mm. Even when they don't have it, you know? Mm. So it was like a lot of people feeling bad because they're watching other people get their gifts and stuff. It's just like, I don't know, but for me, that's just like still five years ago. I, I don't, I personally didn't care. Mm. So my skit was actually just telling people like, Valentine's Day is a day of love, but it doesn't have to be like romance love. It could be self love. It could be where you just do the things that you enjoy. It could be like a spa day. Getting, you know, I'm getting, I'm currently getting my toes done. That's <laughs> so that's a, that's a way of self love. Like you're you're loving yeah, yourself, I so you're doing it. Yeah. With people who I love, my friends who genuinely love me. I'm mm. I'm by the beach. That's like my favorite place. You I mean, know, like, still I think... still jealous though, but I'm I'm happy there. <laughs> so, so my whole thing is, you know, if you if you have love and you mm. found love, that's absolutely awesome and i'm mm. you know that's great but there's so many of us as well who we don't have a significant other and you shouldn't feel excluded on valentine's day mm. in fact be happy for the people that do have theirs manifest your own in the meantime though love on yourself like mm. i don't know my mother always tells me maybe i'm too comfortable being single but <laughs> I've got a i will i will i will safely say that i've been too comfortably single for a long time but happily single but to a point that i'm starting to get just a little bit bored at this time however i am self-loving myself at the moment and i thought just to celebrate the occasion as it was yesterday i thought i'd suit up for you you know what i mean i thought i'd go with the whole vibes are you my valentine's today is that what you're saying i I, I, I mean if you want me to be i mean i went all out for you plus i actually wore my shoes as well like literally you wore you wore dress shoes too i literally gone the full nine effort i Thank you so much. I literally intended that for for a few reasons. Like literally, I, I knew I was going to come to speak to you. And secondly, being that it was Valentine's Day and knowing that all the remote interviews I have ever done, this is the only time I've ever worn a suit for it. And I thought I'd share that with you. I if you weren't wearing a suit when I met you in the UK, when you guys came to do the interview or you came to the interview, well, you weren't not- dressed up in a tie, but I can say you get an A for effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That warms my heart you saying that. So I really do appreciate that. Um, So, I mean, obviously, you know, from the last time we spoke was back in 2018. You came to London. Um, You know, you you had your press day, which we invited to you and we were invited to come to speak to you. Um, And obviously you were interviewed by Munya Chihuahua, um, who has gone on to do massive things. Um, I mean, have you seen his like progression and successes so far? He's hilarious. I mean, from that day alone, he was just so charismatic. And I was like, yo, bro, who are you? So when I saw all his all his accomplishments or how he's just kind of coming to his own, I was very excited for him because I'm like, guys, like that's literally his personality when you meet him. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 great. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. you was going to say I'm just saying I personally love to see people grow into their own. Mm. you know stay true to themselves and like maximize on that and he's just been his authentic self and people have embraced it and he's i mean he's captured the whole world in essence yeah. he's captured the hearts of so many people i mean i'm i'm grateful to say that i know him as a friend um mm-hmm. you know we worked with each other prior to that for a couple of years and then boom he's just skyrocketed mm-hmm. so i keep in touch with him every so often just to tell him that i'm so grateful to have met you and i'm so grateful mm-hmm. to see your success man so you know, I mean, I'm glad to, you got to see his successes, man, because he's a funny dude. Yes. <laughs> he's hilarious. He was hilarious. He's proper hilarious, man. Um, so, I mean, obviously your London experience when you came over, was that your first time in London or have you been here before? It wasn't, but it was my first time there for work. Okay. So did you get uh, did you get any time to like kind of explore while you were over here the last time or was it kind of a quick sort of visit? It was quick. I did Notting Hill. Carnival. Yes, because Carnival was that weekend, I remember. Right. So I did the performances there, which was by far the most amazing experience for me. That's the, I've never performed in front of crowds that large before. So that was a really great experience. Mm. Um, But no, the times before that I went to the UK and the times before that I've gone after, I've I've explored. I love the different restaurants. Um, I still do a lot of my recordings there on this new project. Oh, can't give, can't give you a try. 
the producer, his name is called Sycamore. He's from the UK. I did I've that. Of, I've heard of Sycamore. I did that song when I was in the UK. Wow. Yes. Okay. I did that because I was in the UK when COVID hit and I had to leave yeah. to go back to the States. But I was in the UK working on my album. Oh, wow. So were you yeah. intended to be here for a little while longer before the pandemic I was, hit? I was supposed to be there for three months. Wow. And I was only able to spend two weeks. But oh, in those gosh. two weeks, I made like five, six fire songs. And then I just kept in contact with them because I still work with them. And I just continue to record on their beats. So the reason why I'm even excited about this project is because a lot of the producers and the hands like on deck, they're from the UK. And from the first time I went there for work, I realized I have a real connection with this place. Wow. You, know? so, you certainly do. Yeah, I you do. Cer- you certainly do. And in, you know, like I said at the top of this chat, like I you're one super beautiful woman and, mm-hmm. you know, and knowing that of your Jamaican heritage, like you you know, you have the hot weather, the good vibes. You just showed me like the the beach outside that you're staying at. So you literally have that community spirit like, you know, when being in Jamaica or wherever it is you go to. Mm-hmm. Is you know, is that your expressing expressiveness of being yourself? being sexy is that the result of you know having been a byproduct of jamaica obviously i know you were born in new york but when you moved to jamaica and then obviously with a lot of your photos that you're very expressive is that the result of being from jamaica no i just think it's just a a a point of um no longer i don't know how to say this but like fully embracing myself Mm. um there are moments where I'm completely covered and there's moments where I just want to be in my swimwear. Mm. So in fact, like if I could have it my way, I'd be by a beach in my swimwear every single day. I, I, I bet you would. Yeah, I mean, like I I mean a lot of the photos are obvious that you uh, you would like to have that yeah, sort of like, flex. That would just be my life. Like that's literally, I'm an island girl at heart through and through. I, that's all I really want to do. Like just be around good friends and family by the beach, eating some good food and having some drinks. Mm. So on social media, um, we're going to keep it real too. Like I used to be considered very safe. Okay. Um, and for a long time, the people that I did work with, they wanted to do this whole girl next door thing. And it's fine because I could be her too, but I'm not one thing. Mm. And so that has always, well, ever since I started handling things myself, cause I'm mm. no longer with a label. I was like, you want to know what? I'm going to do what I want to do. So on some days, yeah, I'm going to be sexy. And other days I'm just going to be regular, no makeup, like, you know, fresh face, girl next door type vibes, um, modest, you know, it just depends on my mood that day. Mm. Um, but naturally with social media, it's like, I really hate to play into what it is, but sometimes like when you're a good looking girl, as they would say, whatever that is, Mm. um, you get on there in a swimsuit and your engagement just shoots through the roof yeah naturally and it's something something i i always you know i have my team and i tell them guys look at this picture i'm gonna post and i would always project hey it's gonna probably get around this amount i said but look at this pic over here in the swimsuit we're gonna do these numbers and i'm always right because it's just the reality of where we are right now as long as i'm not doing anything that compromises me and my integrity i'm good if you want to get off on my little bikini pics Mm. And I can I see, care. I can see that you, you know, you keep your dignity at all times, uh, regardless of the amount of pictures you may post of you in a bikini or a swimsuit. You mm-hmm. have your integrity to say, "This is me as a person," and I don't mm-hmm. want people to start thinking that this is a reflection of me, as in to say, "Oh, I'm going to show off my bikini picture because, oh, this is going to shoot up, but and it's going to cater to a male audience." But it's more of a thing where you say, "This is natural to who I am as a person." Yeah. Yes. And I believe you can be sexy and tasteful. 100%. So my, 100%. My, my, my whole thing is that as long as I'm being tasteful with it, I'm completely fine. Mm. Um, and so that's where that's where I'm at with it. You know, social media is a very weird thing. And I always get people that meet me in person and say, well, like, I wouldn't expect for you to be this way in mm. person. And I tell them, you know, social media is what it is. Yeah. It it's only gives like, you one layer. Right. And it's a game and you can decide if you want to play yes or no. And for a long time, I didn't want to play the game, but it was to the detriment of my career. Mm. If I need to be honest, I Mm. was about, I'm not going to have this tool, uh, control my life. And um, I'm not going to compromise it at all. And and I did all these things and I had to accept this is a tool. Mm. Use it. Um, It's going to help your career. Mm -hmm. We're in a time where you don't have a label. 
Mm. Social media, there's so many different people, so many different eyes, you know? So just find interesting ways to tap in. So for instance, like I have my videos, I have pics where I'm covered. I have pics of when I'm in my bikini. I do little skits. I do little, all those different things shows you bits and pieces of who I am and like, and my personality. But it doesn't give you the whole perspective of who you are. It only gives a little percentage of who you are. So right. then obviously what you were saying about when people say, oh, um, you know, oh, I wouldn't have expected you to be like this because of what we see on social media. Where, where mm-hmm. I mean, there was a time where you couldn't even access people without having to go through emails or telephone calls to get to that person. Now we're yeah. at a stage where it's just like everyone's accessible. Everyone knows what everyone's right. doing. Right, right. Which I'm, I'm still getting used to. Well, I mean, so for nice. me, it's the same as well. But like, I, <laughs> I use I use social media is in a sense of for for business and you know to mm-hmm. to promote my to promote my brand and stuff like that. But as far as like day to day stuff, I would say that I'm probably the least social media person as far as you know putting my all out there as far as you know what I mean swagging myself out maybe the odd pictures here and there just to make myself feel good. But I'm mm-hmm. not like excessive to it, so it's kind of like. You yeah, know. I, I still believe in ma- maintaining a uh, sense of self. Mm. And so I don't know everyone that's viewing my page on social media. I'm going to give you enough of what I feel I want you to know mm. about me. Um, but I still believe in the, in a little bit of mystery. Oh, so there's some people, they put their entire lives and that's good for them because it works for them. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. I mean, and it so, certainly is working so, for you. Yeah. And so I'll give you bits and pieces, but you don't get full insight into my life. I believe that some things in music and in this industry, there's so much of yourself you have to share more than the average person. I believe it's only fair to my mental to at least preserve a little for myself and mm. the people closest to me. Wow, right? Pre- so, preach, preach on girl, preach on. Yeah, I, I, so I'm, that, I'm loving that, this. <laughs> that's from the standpoint and that's how I approach social media now. I'm not on there all day. I've probably been on there twice today to upload my stuff and I came off. Yeah. I don't sit on there. I don't watch the likes. I don't, I may go at the end of the day to respond to comments. Mm. So to it's like, you know, how your fans, you, you know. There, no, because as a creative, you also have to be very careful. It gets you in a space of watching other people's stuff and, you know, subconsciously you're starting to compare yourself and I don't, I don't, it's not healthy. No, definitely you know? it's not, so, man. So it's just a bit of balance, really. It's just to maintain yeah. that balance and balance. to keep your self-respect balance. as well. Um, I mean, you know, you mentioned about, you know, becoming independent, which we're going to go into because, you know, back in 2018, um, you know, from what I understood is that you were signed to Bruckart Records, uh, Mm -hmm. which was a joint venture with Polydor, which was how we got to to meet you in the first place. And again, we're grateful to have got the chance to meet you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and obviously from your bio, what you said is that you're an independent artist. So talk to me about um the what made you decide that you wanted to take that route just to become independent was it uh, like a mutual thing like what was the situation i think we're in a time of ownership i think we're in a time where ownership is is what artists should strive for Mm. maybe that's progressive thinking i'm not sure Mm. for me it's important at this point to have full creative control and to own my music I think there are so many greats who came before us that it was all smoke and mirrors. Everything looked so fancy on the outside and we watched them 30 years later, they're all like broke or they signed bad deals Mm. and they're still trying to get money that's owed to them. Um, Not saying that was my experience with Brooke at all. In fact, uh, big up to Shawnee B um, and the whole Brooke Polydor situation. Um, It was a single deal Mm. and uh, they heard Bubble loved it and they helped me a great deal. But I just felt as if, especially with that situation, Bubble was me experimenting with dancehall, like going the whole way. Mm. Um, I couldn't commit to making more Bubble songs because Bubble is not how I speak day to day. So Mm. I didn't see that. I didn't feel as if I could authentically deliver that in every song after that. And I feel like that is where it was taking me. Did you feel? Yeah, sorry, go on. And I've always been against being pigeonholed to a certain sound. Mm. I'm against it because I am not just one kind of artist. I, I'm, I'm vocally trained to sing mm. along with just having, doing dancehall because it's my heritage, like that's my background. Mm. Um, but to say we always want dancehall from you, 
within my soul, I didn't feel like I could just deliver that all the time. So mm. I just said, um, I want to do things my way, which today I might wake up and do a dance all tune. And tomorrow I'm going to wake up and do a singing tune. Mm. And that's just what it is, mm. you know? And, and I see like with a lot of people that I've been speaking with, like, you know, some people have had, you know, true successes in being on a label and being happy with it. Sometimes it's not always that way, you know, sometimes they want that independent route. So they, you know, the situation might be not, might not be as good on the label or they might feel that they've been good and they're paid well, but maybe mm -hmm. they just want that creative control like you were saying earlier. So when you came up, when you had Bubble, when that came out, was that uh, was that through like, you know, not just your input, but was that through help with the label as well to to get that sound out? No, I did Bubble and Shawnee B heard it and said, no, we need that song. Okay, so you already had it made before you had that as, a, yes. as signed as a single? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. So, yes. How, I mean, how do you feel now? Like, I mean, obviously the independent route, like how long have you, so you've been independent for a, a few years now, like since yes. that single deal? I mean, yeah. you, you must feel, you must feel like, you know, like you said, you can do when you want, what, what you want, when you want, no one can tell you nothing and you got that creative control. So, you know, how does it feel being an independent artist in these current times? I mean, it's liberating in some senses, but it's still not easy. Mm. It's not an easy thing to, to be. An independent artist is a lot of work. Mm. You know, but for me, until it's a great situation, I, I wouldn't sign a deal. Mm. Um, I believe that in this time when there's so much information available to us as artists, we shouldn't be signing bad deals. Mm. I think at this point, if anyone signs a bad deal, it's solely on you. Yeah. Because back in the day, artists weren't educated or they didn't have the proper representation or they just didn't know. But mm. now we know. So if you find yourself in a bad deal in 2021, that is on you. Yeah. And I told myself, the, the next I have to be a life changing situation that really, really helps me. Mm. But if it's just to just do what I can do, then I rather hold on to mine and find other ways, mm. you know. But I, 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 for once, not even try to paint this independent artist thing like it's a glamorous thing. Mm. It's far from. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of grinding, a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but um, I believe in my work. Yeah, and and your work is paying off. And your work is paying off, uh, you know, like I said, can't give you a try is a really bubbly sound, which we're going to get into in a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But I wanted to touch on because you spoke to us last time about, you know, you being born in Brooklyn, the hustles of New York, uh, you know, living out in Jamaica and obviously you being in Florida at the moment where we're talking, you're talking to each other from. Um, I spoke to an artist called Dice Isles the other day and he said that his background was being born in Nigeria, moving mm -hmm. to Ghana and then moving to the other side of the world in Canada. Now, I, what I wanted to know is, is like, what made the decisions for you in terms of moving to each of those places? I mean, obviously, New York, you were born from, you moved to Jamaica, you moved back to Florida. So what was what was the moves about? I love living in different spaces. <laughs> I can't say it's solely music driven, to be honest. I right. just go where the opportunities are. Um, music also migrates. Mm. And for me, because I'm able to be in those three different places due to just having very close family living there, I just go. Mm. That's the kind of person I am. I just get up and go. So do you have so you have family in all parts? So do you, yes. do you have yes. in Even New York, in Florida UK, and in the UK? I have family in Jamaica. My parents are here. Um, I have family in Florida. That's where I grew up. I still have a house there and I have family in New York. So wow. I just go between all of them you know and they've and that's why i tell people as well as i said like i've moved around my whole life from i'm young um this didn't happen when i was just an adult so mm. i've so so many different experiences and it filters through into my delivery like my music mm. so with um so with the travel i mean what are the travel situations for you at the moment because obviously you're in florida like uh, is it hard for you to move around no this is jamaica i'm in jamaica are you in ja are you in jamaica yeah Oh, I thought I thought we were in Florida time. We've been Florida today, but I didn't go again, so I'm still in Jamaica. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. So I think uh, all right. So I got a bit confused there, but it, it, it's fine. So I mean, I mean, in, in Jamaica, what's the traveling situation at the moment? Is it is it hard to like navigate yourself through, or you, no? You... We can travel. I don't think a lot of people could come in. I think there's a ban from your side. Um, yeah, there is at the moment. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, I could travel anywhere I need to travel. Mm, mm. Yeah, you just have to take a COVID test. 
Uh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of people would have to if they're traveling at the moment. We can't even we can't even travel on our side. We can't even I go know. anywhere. You I know. know. Uh, I know. Too many politics, man. I know. I know. I know. That's uh, unfortunate. It's a mad one, man. Um, I mean, also the last time we spoke to you, like you know, you mentioned it. Well, Munya was good to bring out the point that you know you were after school counselor, and then you had to fly out in the middle of a lesson to work with Boston Rhymes and Nicki Minaj, which you talked to us about before. Um, and you've, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a really interesting story. I was going back on it yesterday thinking like, Honestly, what? It was so funny you could, you could, you could not write it. It was so funny when he pointed, I was like, how do you know as an aftercare counselor? He's like, because I went into your comments and people were calling you Miss Tosh. And I was like, ah. <laughs> but I have to know throughout the pandemic, I was teaching kids in China and Taiwan. Oh, wow. Not just children, adults as well. Okay. Um, and so I, I still find the time to do that. Um, I have a thing, even as being a creative, and ideally my impact is to make a difference, mm. right? So even if it's musically or just me being myself. And mm. so being an aftercare counselor, being a tutor is something that's very much a part of who I am. Mm. And so during the pandemic where we were unable to do anything music related, I couldn't even go to the studio. We couldn't leave our homes. I just started working online, teaching kids and just, um, committing to doing purposeful things mm, so wow. I, yeah so I, I still do that so what what made you get into teaching was that before music ever came into play or was that something that was kind I've of in between been in music I just got into to teaching kids when I was in college I needed a I needed a little job on the side you, know? <laughs> you need a little job you need a little bit of money yeah, there you know what I'm saying couldn't get into the the serious kind of jobs. Like I couldn't do that. I just, I didn't like it, mm. but I loved it. When my friend said to me, you know, they're looking for uh, aftercare counselors at the school. Um, would you, would you care to try? Mm. And I was like, yeah, I think I'd want to try. Mm. And I just loved, I love the innocence mm. of a child. Mind. I love how brave they are. Oh. they're so brave like they have not been jaded by the world as yet and so they believe anything is possible you would be surprised what you learn from children so are you a, um are you like a motivational speaker then because it sounds like you know with the teaching that's part of it i've actually had those opportunities where i've had to speak at conferences and stuff and i think naturally being in that world of having to speak to people speak with them through issues i guess you develop that mm. without realizing but as i said um and even in my music, and I say that too, with my music, when you hear it, especially this body of work, it's a lot of uplifting. Like, mm, you know, definitely. can't give you the choice for me to, as I said, to empower women to take their power back. You know, like the next single I have called My Thing Different is about owning whatever is uniquely different to you. You know, um, it could be that you got an extra toe. I don't know, like whatever <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, to be, to be honest, if I was doing football, which I don't do, I wouldn't mind an extra toe if I were doing that. But I mean, <laughs> the toes I have, I'll keep to what they are. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, um, everyone's unique and you're supposed to own that in a time mm. where everyone wants to compare themselves. So True. I found I had to sit with myself and figure out how do you want to deliver your music? And for me, it's, it could still be fun. It could be playful. It could be sexy. It just needs to be true to who you are. And for me, I'm in a place where I'm about making an impact a purposeful mm. one, a positive one. I want to um, help to encourage. Mm. And be know, be so. before before we get into like one venture that you're very passionate about, uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to touch on, like we were saying about, you know, you working with Buster Rhymes and Nicki Minaj. You've worked mm -hmm. with also the likes of Pharrell, Call of Dre. Um, mm -hmm. You know, from those connections that you built, have mm -hmm. you managed to like work with other artists in that line of work as well during that t during those time periods or have you just been focusing purely on yourself? Like you said that, you know, it's been a couple of years of like trying to work on your your own mental and your own sort of, you know, place in the world at the moment. But where are you at as far as like connections with artists? You know, so I still, just the other day, like whenever I'm releasing new music, I reach out to Cool from Cool and Dre and he definitely supports. But one thing I know, or I've I t I explained to people, um, I'm so grateful for those connections I made. Mm. But when it comes to the work in terms of creating mm. um it's about focusing on yourself mm. those people want to see that you can delve into who you really are mm. and bring forth something that they want to be 
connected to not because of if they know you yes or no if they worked with you 10 years ago mm. they want to see you as your own artist and so for me i don't get caught up on like the names mm. because i've been in the biggest of studios with the biggest names i it's all about the craft mm. and, and they can tell, yeah they sorry can go tell, it seriously they can tell if it's just a joke to you or if this is what you're choosing to make your livelihood mm. so i need to step away to really work on a body of work i was proud of mm. that i knew that i would consistently promote and like sell mm. and you're de- and you know you definitely strike me as someone very very passionate about what they do mm. um and one venture that i got to talk about is uh black nabamba club oh my yeah, brand yeah your branding um you know like i've been seeing it on the gram it's a really deep and meaningful message it's so explanatory and i've seen it on accessories t-shirts jumpers and i see that there's a lot of support with it as well and i i understand of it this is this is off the back of uh you know a lot of the black lives matter protests that have been happening last year um right. firstly talk to me about the you know with that venture was this something that you wanted to go into before all of these protests came up and then when it came to it like why with the branding what what made you do kind of lead into it okay so fashion is something i've always been into but um honestly wouldn't have been doing sweaters and shirts or it it, i didn't even see it happening anytime soon Mm. what happened is that during that time um i felt as if i wasn't really contributing to anything to much Mm. of anything Mm. i would speak out and i'd use my platform but i was like what else can i do to help people feel very proud of who they are Mm. and for me i never even had to this may sound really crazy i hope that you don't play this and they crucify crucify me for it but growing up in jamaica i didn't really have to acknowledge that i was black i knew i was black i mean black i I, I understand what you mean like hey my name is my name is tosh and i'm black like i didn't have to do that my name is tosh i go to this school i'm trying to be this kind of person whatever then i get to the states and it's just like oh so you're black oh so you're black oh but how many so do you have this it's like okay well i guess this is a thing Mm. so when the when the protests happened at such a tense time and i realized that so many people grew up americans i'm speaking african-americans grew up feeling defeated and not loving themselves and truthfully if we want to be honest even in jamaica we have a bleaching pandemic where people yeah. just love to bleach their skin because they've yeah. been taught not to love themselves yeah and i was like how can i do something to help people feel proud and i went to um one of the protests actually one mm. day i went to the protests that they were having and i have a friend he, her father was very close to bob marley and he um did protests as well when Rastafarians were being arrested for being Rastas and like Mm. owning being black. And he was out there with us. And I took a picture of him along with his son and my friend. And I just felt so proud for them as a family, like watching this elder and his children represent for some very true to them. Mm. And I took the picture and I posted it on my social media. But in the story, I said, Black Nabongo class. And everyone was just messaging me with like the fists up, like it did something to them. And I was like, this would be dope on a shirt. And so within a couple of days, I had just linked my, my team and I was like, hey, I have an idea. Let me know what you think about it. And they're like, oh, it's dope. You should do it. And I was like, but guys, look at me. Like, they're going to be like, yo, she's not even authentic. Like, does she really believe that? You know, I was there doubting myself. And on my birthday, I was like, you know what, Tosh, you know, it's time you just start really believing yourself. And, mm. and running, you know, just don't overthink these things. Um, just go with it and you know the reason uh, for me it's something purposeful and that was a term i was using non-stop last year it was purposeful right when i released it the feedback i got i was in such shock i think i'm still in shock sometimes Mm. people love the brand and and how they feel when they have it on um it is supposed to make people feel uncomfortable Mm. i wanted something that would make someone make people feel uncomfortable yeah. In Jamaica, they're so afraid of the word bombaclat. It's like, ooh, she said it. Like, and so with me saying black na bombaclat on a shirt, it's very abrasive. It's in your face. Mm. And that is the point. It's to show, yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm this and what. I, and think, so- I think it's interesting what you just said, because, you know, if we're talking like censorship in a way, because back in the days, like, you know, for me personally, like I was watching 18 plus movies, like action movies. I'm an eight year old kid. And at these times, I didn't think there was any sort of backlash or consequence from doing that such thing. 
And even what you said about, you know, uh, mm. not fully, not in, a, not in a bad way, but I get what you meant as in like not f accepting the full term that you are a black person. It was the same okay. for me, even being in school. I still have those struggles in, because I'm mixed race, um, you know, I come from a predominantly white family and mm -hmm. I'm still learning about my black heritage. The, yes. you know, the fact that it, what really hit home for me was when the protests happened last year and I was seeing, you know, there was like white people kneeling down for black people. Like, I, I, I don't know, there, there was a particular yeah. video that I saw and I, I never cried so hard in my life. Yes. And I'm not really an emotional person. And that really dug deep for me. And I'm yeah. thinking like, wow, mm -hmm. I am white. Yes, but I'm also mm -hmm. black. And I have to accept the fact that, you know, I have to... I have to figure out how, you know, to bring it as a whole. And I'm still learning that because my dad was never around. So I've, I've got like a missing link there, but it's just so, it's so beautiful how you've come up with a branding that is in your, in people's faces. And it's just like, it's unapologetic. And I love the fact that you just went ahead with it after doubting yourself for a while, but for, do you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And the thing is that with Black Nabomba Club, right? It's, you just said you're from a predominantly white family, but you have a black dad. Yes. You don't know much about him, but the reality is you still have very strong black ties. You you can still put on your black Nabumba clout shirt. Mm. Um, my cousin calls it um, the light brights representing because my cousin is like. <laughs> I like how you said that. She, she, she can't even tan that kind of like extremely like mixed as well, but she does have a black side. Mm. So she, that black side, she's black in a bumble clot. Like, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I tell people, you don't have to be dark skin to wear black in a bumble clot. Mm, no, it's for sure. It's expressing that I do have this link. Uh, it may be my granddaddy. I don't know. But mm. that whatever part that is of me, it is proud. Mm. I am proud of it. Black and proud, yeah. You know what I mean? So that that is that was the purpose of black in a bumble clot, and I'm extremely grateful oh. for it. Mm. Um because I think it's delved me into a space where people understand once again, I'm trying to do things that are purposeful, mm. right? I could have made up, people tell me you should have done a swimsuit line. I could do that. That's easy. I plan to do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can have a swimsuit with the black Nabumbla cart with it. Right. But for now, I just mm. wanted to do something that whether it's, the, it could be the dog. It could be the puss. It could be the five-year-old. It could be the 70-year-old. Mm. It could be the 40-year-old. Mm. Everyone could put on a black and a bumble clot shirt mm. and rep that. Rep you know that, what I mean? Rep so, that shit, man. Right. right. Yeah. So that's why, that's why I did that. Sorry. Yeah, man. Um, so, I mean, with the with the, with the the clothing and the accessories that you got, I, you know, obviously you got your first batch out that you've had from last year. Are you looking mm -hmm. to do other things with the branding? Are you looking at oh, like no, other... Oh. collaborations dropping in a month or so. Oh, Yeah. Where Collaborations, yes, 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 yes. Ooh, exciting. A couple more SKUs coming out. I just had it to. I just had to. For me, everything I do, I take seriously, and I need to be involved, like mm. all the way. So I had to source someone that could really bring to life these ideas I had, and I did. And mm. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Oh, exciting! Exciting news. Oh, feel so good about it. I mean, let you know. Obviously, let's get into. Can't give you a try. Uh, I know you've been kind of mentioning in bits and bobs, so let's really dive into it. Um, mm -hmm. so obviously it's your latest visualizer, your latest video. And mm -hmm. the message that I get is like, you're just done with waste men and you're looking for a real one and a good one at that as well. Um, you know, and it's, it's very funky, very R and B, very tropical. So you have all those elements in there. Like a lot of your influences in being in different countries, I can tell. Um, what made you come up with that concept? Was it like something that you went through in your past experience and the thought, nah, I'm bringing that in the song. Okay, so there's a song by Sisla Kalonji called Give You a Try. Yes, I'm aware of it. A long year, like you released years ago. Mm -hmm. And in this song, as a Sisla fan growing up, I'd never heard him approach a song that way. It was so vulnerable. And he's begging the person, the lady, give me a try because mm. I know we could be great. You know? Yeah. And I, and I always said, wow, like such a beautiful song. But when I flipped it, when I got the beat from Sycamore, because he flipped it, I said, you want to know what? That was the man speaking on behalf of men. And that's normally when the man messes up so bad. He's like calling off your phone. He wants to cry now. He never cried before in the relationship. Now he wants to cry because you're done. And he's like, hoo, 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 hoo. And yes. Oh, shit. Woman is like through the door, 
Right. And that's when he wants to realize he had a great thing. So I'm like, you know what, Cesar, that was cute. It was cute. But I'm going to represent for that woman at that time because I've had those calls from those exes, like in that vulnerable, like death space. Like, right. I need you back. And I'm like, bro, like I broke up with you months ago, but I've been broke up with you in my mind like a year ago. Like I kept on asking you to make these changes. You never did. So mm. now you want to do this? It's too late. Yeah. You know, so I was like, how can I bring this to life in a useful way, in a respectful way, in a way that answers him, but in a way where it's still strong, where it gives women, when, when, that, when a woman who is going through this hears this, she's supposed to feel like she has the ammunition now to go out and be like, nah, you want to know what I was even thinking about it? But now that I heard Tosh, nah, it's okay. I'm not giving this a try. Let me, a- let me, let me flip it for a second. So it's interesting that you said that because I went through a similar phase when I was with my ex-girlfriend. So mm-hmm. imagine this now, yeah. So it's like the amount of times that I've been called up saying, oh, um, where are you going? And what are you mm-hmm. doing? What are you up to? Now, these times I was in a long distance relationship. So in part, that didn't help. But mm-hmm. it was the fact that I was so faithful to this woman that every given moment that I was doing something outside, she'd call me and say, what are you doing? I'm on the computer. What are you doing? Like, oh, if you saw a girl at a club, would you take her number? No. Why are we even having this discussion? And it literally, it got to the point where it's like, I was going out with my friends and I was having a good time. I had a few drinks. I called her and I said, like, I wish you were here, you know, because she had like a, a late shift so she couldn't get out of it. And then she told me that I was heartless. I called you and I said to you that I was missing you, but yet you want to put shit on me. So I got to the point that I was like, nah, I can't have this anymore. But then I thought I was hasty, went up to try and see her. And then she said, my heart stopped for you. And then I thought to myself, well, you know what? Like, you know what? Any of that bullshit, I'm not going to deal with anymore. So that's why it's like, I'm very selective when it comes to like, you know, any potential partners that I'm with because of the past experience that I had. So to, to, to flip it, any bullshit, any, bull, any bullshit that comes my way, even like if ladies were to come to me and say like, oh yeah, da da da, I'd be like, nah, I ain't going to give you a try. I've been through that. All right, and, and funny enough, we, I'm having a live discussion about that. Like, what are, not even just a, about, like, past relationships, but if you're someone looking to engage with someone, like, what are what are uh, characteristics you're looking for? Mm. And what characteristics won't allow you to give the person a try? Yeah. Because it seems these relationships have become so interesting. Yeah. In, like, the past, I want to say, five to eight years since yeah. social media. You know, mm. it's, it's there's been a huge morph in relationships, mm. um, do's and don'ts, the cans and the cannots. Yeah, that it'd be really cool to have a live discussion and hear a different um perspective. No, I hear that, and I'm glad that you're you know trying out different things to you know further express yourself because, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, even with you being very passionate and very unapologetic, even when it came to like you know with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, mm-hmm. becoming president and vice president respectfully like you know when those sort of discussions are being taught like how did you get that unapologetic view about you that you're willing to speak out on these things and not give a shit about it so back in the day there was this thing where people would tell you to shut up and sing or yeah. shut up and dribble the ball or mm. you know you're just supposed to be one way and you're a creative or an athlete so you shouldn't have a voice i will never shut up mm. i'm actually very well educated um, I studied international relations in school and did journalism. Right. I'm very, very, when it comes to the space of like social norms, um, when it comes to anything that has to do with human rights, all those things I'm extremely passionate about. So uh, me singing and me being passionate about just day to day stuff, they're not mutually exclusive. Like they exist, they mm. coexist actually. Mm. So with that said, I live in America. And so does my family. Yeah, I'm back and forth between Jamaica and America, but America is the leading nation of the world and their democracy is failing. Mm. So while other artists, maybe they don't want to be interested or they don't want to speak on politics because maybe their fan base won't appreciate it, that's their business. If you didn't know about politics, when you you will know about it now when you follow me because I'm going to speak out on certain things that I believe are injustices. Mm. And for me, Kamala Harris... Um, is a woman, a mixed woman from Indian and Jamaican or Indian and black descent. Mm -hmm. She is the vice president Mm -hmm. of the United States of America. That's historical, whether or not that's history being made already. 
So I'm about to highlight that because mm. representation matters. 100%. You know, and um, with um, Joe Biden as well. Sorry, I'm picking up and I'm moving. That's but with fine. Joe Biden, with Joe Biden as well. Um, I tried to tell him that day, even on my post, I'm not about telling people what to believe in, mm. but I'm about telling people that, you know, I'm about being fair and I'm about human rights. What the other president was doing was unjust. Mm. And so I had to speak on it. Mm. And you you know, like I said, you're very passionate about your views and I'm glad that you're, 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 you're beauty with a brain, you know, a hundred percent. And you're using it very, you're using both very, very well. Thank you so very much. I love this. This I is just... probably, this is probably the most authentic view of an interview I've ever seen in my life. Yes. You want to know it. what I was going to say that I was just going to go inside and, um, get all dressed up. And I was like, you want to know what? First and foremost, we're having an interview now on Zoom. <laughs> I've done the exact opposite. <laughs> so, and so let me just show him what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, and this is what I'm doing. I'm, it's a treat to myself for the, the video. Um, it was so much work to be done. And I was, to be honest with you, I'm always anxious every time I release music. Um, and so I, I put it out there. Yeah. And I was like, Tosh, you know, go enjoy yourself. Yeah, yeah. You got to treat yourself, man. Like, you know, especially especially with the pandemic going on, any li any little treat counts at this point. Yes, yes. So you got to do it, man. Friends and I'm by the beach, so... Oh, God. I'm Again, like I said, I'm, I wish I was at the beach now. <laughs> to see that view, I'm thinking like, let me get out of this gloomy shit hole with the UK right now. <laughs> oh, boy. So, I mean, look, musically, where are we at? Because obviously, you know, we you, we just discussed Can't Give You a Try. Of course, like with, you know, Sizzler being a feature, especially like, you know, with a little, uh, little feature towards the end of the video I saw um you know firstly how was it like you know connecting with sizzler because i mean he's a legendary dance hall artist for one and all but also like where are we at musically at this current time sizzler was such a gentleman and such he handled it like a real mentor like he heard the song express that you know i think this would sound better i'd made the changes he wanted it did come out better he okayed it. He told me how he's happy that the women um, have an anthem and that there's someone speaking up on behalf of their side. And he had us come to his studio. He was playing us his new album. Wow. And it was a group of us. It was like the whole crew from the video. Mm. And he just embraced all of us. And it was a very, very great experience. We went down to August Town, where he's from. Mm. And... Um, Every time, whether like it's Khaled or them, they go down to August Tone. And I just felt it just was exciting to be a part of that. Mm. And that he embraced this little song I did. I just, in my mind, I'm thinking it's a remix. Mm. And the way he embraced it, <laughs> I was so can't, happy. Can't beat it. What, what's, yeah. the be what's the best advice that Sizzle has given you? You know, with this, he just said, with okay, so music-wise... I can't say that he told me anything as an artist what to do, but when we were when I was when I did the song and I had other words in there, I remember him saying to me, We want you want to get through you want to represent for the women, but you still want to get through to the men. You mm -hmm. don't want them to feel as if you're just dissing them. Mm -hmm. You almost need them to feel remorseful. So don't go as hard. Right. I was able to take out certain things to not diss the men up because I was going in. You know what I was like? <laughs> Can you imagine it was like a full heart going in? I think uh, we're not yeah. all bad. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I like that he did that. I even have it on video. I'm actually going to post it soon. I'm going to post about what it was like working with him um, mm. because people deserve that insight and they are supposed to be appreciated. People like the Sizzlers that's been around in this music industry forever. That's put Jamaica and reggae and dance on the map, mm. you know, that continues to, to make great music, you know, that helped to, to, for some movement you know mm. like they need to people need to pay or we need to pay them homage now and mm. i'm so grateful that i took his song and i represented it well mm. from the actual song to the visuals mm. i wanted him to be proud of it mm. you know so yeah i mean well he's definitely he's definitely like a mentor for that man and obviously i grew up on sizzler as well so for you to even meet him and have that advice man it's just like yeah. you know a massive congratulations pat on the back for you do you know what i mean like you know blessings to you for that one man 
Um, I mean, what, what are we looking at musically next then? Because you said like you had uh, some bodies of work um, even before the height of the pandemic. So are we talking singles, EPs, albums? What's the move? Dropping like four or five singles and we're dropping the album. My album oh. is called My Ting Different. Okay. And you, your thing is definitely different. <laughs> that, yes, that, 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 that's, that's a statement in itself. Thanks. And so what we're doing on the album is um, the songs. For me, it's a different songs. Mm. My team different, that's coming up. It's more poppy. It's playful. Um, there's like a lot of wordplay. I'm being very witty. Um, and that's that's what I like about this new album to this body of work. I'm so feisty with it. You know, <laughs> I'm just, Love it. I'm just speaking my mind. And so my team different drops in around five weeks. Um, we're still going to be pushing Can't Give Me a Try. Mm -hmm. The songs after that, I have a, a song called Big Boss. Ooh. And I'm just speaking about it's for it's for anyone to listen to. But, you know, because of the pandemic, a lot of people started small businesses. Like, just said, you know, let me try this. Mm. And it's working. We're in a place of independence and ownership. So, like, even with Big Boss, you're supposed to play it and, like, drive to work or drive to work going, like, yeah, like, I am a boss. Like, I could do this, you know? So that is that is where the music is right now. Um, Love it. You know, it's just about getting through to everyone, whether it's the really young minds or the old. Oh. Y'all was just in shit or it's been in the shits for the past couple of years and we all collectively need to do and be better. Mm. So that's what I'm creating, but I'm making it where it's palatable and not so serious. Mm. So it's you know, fun. It's fun at the same time. And it's giving that fun yeah. reflection upon you as Playful. well. It's almost cocky sometimes, but then it's serious. It's vulnerable. Mm. You know, I express on there, there's a song I have, Letter to Myself. I spoke about being depressed for years um, in the music industry and, and like not feeling good enough. Wow. Um, and faking like I was okay when I wasn't, well, you know, until like I was brought to my knees. And wow. so like... Like I touch on everything. Wow, I, I mean, everything. you definitely, you definitely are worthy. You definitely are beautiful. You definitely have brains. You definitely are passionate, and they're all things I love about you. Thanks. So you Thanks know so. the ones. Um. So before I let you go, there's just a few more things. Um. So of course, like with collaborations, you said you're taking a back burner for it for now. Um. Obviously, you've had ties with the UK as well. Um, you know, are there UK artists on our side that, I mean, obviously you worked with Trilly Banks on a remix a couple of years ago. Um, who, would, who else would you like to work with? Who else are you hearing I about? I like Georgia Smith a lot. Um, I like, I like Georgia Smith. I like Stormzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like his vibe. Mm. Um, recently, because... I knew from him before, but like this last album, Fredo's album, last album. A lot of people love Fredo, man. Yeah. I mean, I've honestly, like, I thought he was cool before. Like, yeah, he's dope. But like this last album, I was like, oh, like, he's really dope. He's you know, getting um, a lot of love right now on his albums and his album music. Very solid. Like, wow. You know, yeah. so of course, I just really, I would have loved to be up in that UK space. I'm so sad you guys have those little borders on you right now. <sighs> I mean, um, I mean, it's it sucks because we've got so much politics on our end. Um, you know, the only thing I'll say on it is that we can't if we if we decided so much travel, we get uh, like travel to any like hard red listed country, we get fined. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's ridiculous, really. And I've not traveled for I was meant to travel before the pandemic. I was meant to go to Ireland and that got shut down because of the pandemic. And I've not been traveling since. So. But you know what? I just have to keep my spirits high, which I have been doing. And, you know, and, and it seems like for you, regardless of what's happened, like, you know, you're on a beach for goodness sake. Do you know what I mean? You're just, you're just living it up. I mean, I was in Florida in my, in my room, just breathing in centralized air and going crazy. And I was like, I can't do this. And so I just packed it myself. I went to Mexico first and then I came to Jamaica and I haven't left since. Wow. I've been to Jamaica since last October. Wow. I, I mean, came on a way. I was like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Just keep it the one way for now. You're good where you are, darling. So, yeah. yeah. Because you have to, for me, um, as I said, when I say island girl at heart, um, our sanity at this point is most important, right? 100%. There's restrictions we have to work with. There's laws in place and we have to respect that. But I mean the beach. <laughs> You yes, know? yes. I need to buy the beach. I need the sun hitting me on my face. <laughs> hey, you're glowing, man. You're glowing I with that sun, girl. 
Yeah, I can't be no lockup. I still need access to my fruits. Like, <laughs> love it. I love this. Your body. I can't do no little stale food to put in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I tried it. It was breaking my face out. It was making me sad. Oh, and I was boy. Like, Go home to where your heart is. And, um, I think it's been doing a thing for me. I, it, it certainly has. I mean, there's no denying that. Well, before I let you go, uh, I do this with every single artist. I am a bit of a Twitter stalker. Okay. Right. So you you seem to be the queen of tweets, uh, especially as of recently. But we're going to go through some fun ones anyway. They're fun, fun and lighthearted. And just to go a bit of elaboration for our audience, just to have a bit of fun and just get a bit more context on the tweet. Is that good with you? That's fine. Go ahead. All right. Cool. So... The first one is being single isn't a struggle. Settling is. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate? Yeah. Do you, if you want to elaborate I on what you meant by what it? I said. I said what I said. Being single isn't a struggle. I don't know if this looks like struggle life to you, but let me just give you like a pan of where I'm at. You really can't. Can you see that? Can you see that? Do you see that? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> this is single, dude. Nothing about this is a struggle. <laughs> I need to I need to be part of your life for that man seriously <laughs> you know deciding that you have to be with someone for the sake of having to be with them and you're not, not for happy sure. is a struggle mm. pretending that you are happy is a struggle mm. wearing a mask is a struggle not being true to yourself is a struggle mm. it makes your hair fall out it makes your skin break out it makes you lose weight it makes you gain weight wow. whatever it does it causes an imbalance Wow. Right? You're not living your best life. So that's the real struggle. That was... The real bag is in being happy. And for, for that's why I said for Valentine's Day, it was important for me to even send out those tweets and do that skit. Like, guys, you want to know what? I'm not saying that I'm the prettiest little gem, but your girl isn't bad looking either. And guess what? I'm single. <laughs> like, it is okay. Hey. <laughs> okay to be single right now. There is nothing yeah. bad about being single. So mm. that's why I went so hard yesterday with the tweets. Just kind of like, and I, funny enough, there's a girl that reached out to me like at 10 something in the night. She goes, I've been crying all day. I went through a really bad breakup a couple weeks ago and I saw your story and I saw that your post and it literally, it made me laugh and it's, it's been the best part of my day. Wow. And I said to her, Bobs, I, for not one second will I make it feel like what you're going through isn't a real thing. You're feeling real emotions, but... Mm. Even just for that second, that's why I did that. To make you understand that you are not by yourself and that it's okay to not have someone on this day, but you need to love on yourself. Preach it, girl. Preach it, girl. I'm, love, I'm, really, I'm really loving this. I'm really digging this. Okay. Um, next one is, this, t- this TikTok shit is harder than it looks. Right off. Like, <laughs> stop acting like this is... First of all, it's full-on choreography, okay? It's full-on one, two, three, snap. Full, like... It's a thing. You want yeah. to catch all this, watch it in the video. Like, it's a it's a whole project, <laughs> you know? And these little young girls on here are being like, oh, it's just like a little Corvette, Corvette, hop in a hop. It's just like, no, this is something that takes like five tries for me. So. Yeah. I think it. I think it's really like really young girls because, I mean, I've got family like, you know, the, you know, so I've got like a friend of the family, you know, their daughters are like, you know, eight years old and they got TikTok, da- TikTok dances to a T. And I'm looking at, I'm thinking like, yo, I'm, is it just me? Am I getting old? What's going on? In fact, in fact, in, to know if you did a TikTok right, you have to send it to your young cousins. Like, yo, did I do good on this? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get the seal of approval. You're only eight and I don't trust you. For <laughs> 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 Oh my god, yeah. See see you gotta get the younger generation's approval, not us yeah. anymore. Bloody hell. Um n- next one is uh cute half naked pics on IG equals a plethora of I miss you so much DMs. <laughs> Big facts. Big facts. Uh, out. Everyone comes out, miss you, miss you, how you been? Like, yo, this whole time you didn't realize you missed me until I got half naked for Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? For true? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So all that was, yeah. All the time. I mean, all the time. It never fails. But yeah. that's something like we're in a world and I don't judge it anymore. It's just what is. It's mm. a new culture. But everyone is on the phone. Everyone is just really on Instagram. Like, rather just be on Instagram than having to talk to you. 
Yeah. And so it's in those moments that you strike their attention that they remember that you're there like, oh, yeah, hey. I haven't spoken to you in like six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they try to be smart. They try to be smart, but it's flipped around. Definitely interesting. Yeah, no, social media was really interesting, man. Next one is I want cookies, the ones that that's a little crispy on the outside, but the middle is chewy and gooey. I just had one. I, there you go, there you go. And you you said it quite a while back, but I mean, yeah, I mean, you must be a big fan of cookies for you to say that. So there are these moments where I crave cookies. They have to be the right cookies. Mm. And as I said, it has to be a little bit crispy on the outside, but it has to have that chewy, gooey I'm, factor. I'm middle. with you. I'm with you. Yeah. And yeah, we have a we have a store over here called Ben's Cookies, and they make the sickest cookies ever. It's like it just melts in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I have that with a glass of milk. And, um, oh. <laughs> food coma, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a real foodie that way. Like, I love, love food. Like, it's a passionate Same. thing for me. It's like entertainment. For some people, food is fuel. Mm. And that's nice. Mm. <laughs> for me, food makes me happy. I, I could, I, and that, like you just said, you had your cookie and now you feel blessed, you feel happy. So I got you at a good spot right now. Very good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, next one is integrity over everything. Yeah. My um, motto. Yeah. That's your motto. So... I mean, is there is there a further elaboration on it? Is there, you know, for our audience, what you meant by, you know, what it means to have integrity over everything else? Yes. Um, we're in a time where a lack of integrity is being praised, or a lack of integrity can get you clout. Mm. And because it gets you clout, you become a celebrity, and then overnight you're this someone. Mm. So we're in a time where people are being praised for their lack of integrity and they're being praised for their ineptitude. Mm. And um, sometimes it can make you sit back and wonder, what am I doing wrong? You're doing nothing wrong. Mm. Everything has its time. Yeah. So this is the time for this to do its thing, right? Yeah. Then it can happen, but you don't have to conform to it. Wow. So I'm good with watching it take place. Hey, knock yourselves out. No, but I hear my that. My is everything because when I'm 80... I want to be able to sit back and say, yeah, you're going to make mistakes, but I want to know that I made sound decisions. Mm. You know, I have the tools to make sound decisions, so I have to commit to that. Mm. You know, when you don't know better, then you can't do But When you know better, you have to do better. That's mm. why I started by saying that integrity for me is everything. So, Just saying that, just saying that. Um, couple more, couple more, because there's really good ones here. Um, I need a moment when I wake up to recalibrate. I mean, right. it's People probably <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm similar to you because I'm not a morning person generally, anyway. At all, and I put it there that day because I couldn't scream it because I wanted to scream it to my mother. <laughs> she just doesn't get it. <laughs> She does not care. She tries to have full-fledged conversations with me in the morning, and she knows. Okay, when you first wake, <laughs> don't say whole sentences. It sounds like gibberish to me. My, it's like even though my eyes wake up, my brain hasn't. So mm. I tell people, give me a moment. Like I have a morning thing. I get up, I just lay in the bed, I do like a little devotion, I might put on like my little praise and worship, then my little meditation music, and I do like my little affirmations in my head. And say okay today's gonna be a great day and that like that lasts like a half hour then i go like wash my face brush my teeth and say yeah 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 you know then i can integrate and i could talk when you <laughs> open the door at seven something in the morning while i'm still in like deep realm sleep and you're talking to me because you're awake it's like fighting words bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i just gotta hold it Oh and my god! This to Twitter. You know? <laughs> so that's why I put that up that morning. I oh my up. god! Listen, my mom's the same with me. The only difference is like we're more later during the day as far as like our wake ups and stuff like that. But when it comes to like, can you get me coffee? Can you do me? Can you get me? A... Mom, I just bloody woke up. Can you give me a second? I've got some things to do before I can start doing it. I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, oh come on, just give me a second. I... Let me just get my shit together first, Bro, and then we'll talk. I... Yeah. <laughs> Care. My mother does not care. I even tagged her on Instagram about it, and she's like, wow. 
we do it and she doesn't she doesn't care she don't give a shit my mum don't care either like you know no matter what I tell her it's still the same thing like mums sometimes are just stubborn anyway but that'll be another conversation um (laughs) next one is I'm actually respecting this term situationship a lot more these days yeah I mean, because obviously we 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 just seem to be that relationships are far few between compared to what we're seeing. Now, I don't know whether that social media is another thing, but maybe that's just me looking at it as just like, is it really like easy to get into a relationship now? Which I hardly doubt it because everyone's still, do you know what I mean? Within themselves. I don't know. What do you think? The reason why I respect the term situationship a lot more is because now there's a a subculture no no we no we can make a distinct difference between relationships and whatever the next kind of shit is mm. which is a situation which could be a plethora of different things um but before you just were seeing these relationships about the place and they were just crazy mm. like a whole bunch of stuff going on which wasn't relationship like so when i now hear oh it's a situation oh so I know what that means. Mm. There's some men now who tell you, I don't really want a relationship. I want a situation. Oh, okay. I mean, that doesn't work for me, but I respect that. You can be clear about what you want. So I'm very okay with the term situationship. Are you more of a relationship type girl in general? I'm definitely a relationship person. I don't want a situationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you, like, you, don't, you don't want one situation, then you move on from it. It's like, uh, okay. That doesn't, uh, well, situationship mm. means that there's lack of boundaries. I'm a boundaries True. kind of person. Yeah, just only get to a certain level, yeah. Right. So if I sign up for a situation, it means I'm not kind of allowing for anything to kind of happen. There's a lack of boundaries. So if something happens and I'm not pleased with it, I'm unable to stand up for myself because I actually got myself into it. Yeah. But if we have a relationship and there's a boundary there and you cross that boundary, I'm able to speak on it because these are some guidelines and terms, you know. You didn't adhere to the terms, so I get to speak on it. <laughs> it's like it's like uh, it's like you're signing the contract that you got to read yeah, the terms and conditions before yeah, signing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love right. this. All right, two more before uh, two more, and I'll let you go. Um, okay. Ghetto Jamaicans identify with struggle, so they recognize the pain and they speak out. But I'm sorry if I continuously expect better from colleagues, friends, you know, people I grew up with. Was that a moment oh. in time that you were feeling? Uh huh. Wow, you went and dug up some stuff. That's what I'm about. Yeah, it was during the Black Lives Matter protests. Mm. Yeah, so obviously that was in reflection to that. I didn't like how silent a lot of people who I know were. Mm. Uh, Maybe they feel it's not their experience. They don't have to, which, Mm. which I'm against that. I'm actually against that. I don't believe you have to go through something to speak on it. Mm. I believe that once something is an, an injustice, you should speak on it. And I believe that when you're in a position to help, um, whether it's through vocally sharing your platform, um, sharing awareness, you are supposed to take that uh, and and be responsible, be responsible with your platform. And so in that time, I felt as if people I know um, would see it and just be like, oh, well, you know, that's not my problem. Mm. Or I can't, you know, I can't identify with it. And it's just like, you're looking at it the wrong way. Mm. you know because truthfully we may not experience it like that but we still experience something like that in jamaica Mm. and that's why you find that you know a lot of ghetto people in jamaica feel as if they don't have a voice Mm. you know or that no one cares Mm. that's because you flourish in your community with your friends and family Mm. and this is not everybody i'm saying a lot of people not everyone Mm. Um, and so you feel like, oh, everything is great. Everything is rosy and peachy. No, bro. Just down the road right there, there's someone that can't, you don't have clean water. Mm. Wow. You know? So, um, so I think it's, it's, it's very important. At that time, I was just expressing my disappointment in wanting better from people who I know could have. That, you, that you can do better. I hear yeah. you. Last one. Uh, good girl, go dress up. And go eat brunch with your other single friends. Go do a little spa day vibes. Go dress up in lingerie and take pics. Go research the vibrator to your liking. <laughs> I was gone when I read that one. Yep. <laughs> Is it because self-love varies. People use affirmations. Some people use vibrators. I was just saying that people have options out there. And I was trying to appease to my crowd out here, whoever is watching or listening. We have options. Like your only option isn't a partner. 
so go look go read go research and yeah yeah go 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 to your local ann summers and and you know and find yeah, you know, you know what I mean? That's... Find, find find the right one that fits for you oh <laughs> oh lord oh my gosh well tosh i've missed you uh i fully appreciate you coming on um it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you um Thank you. I, I know you've got more famous shit to do so i ain't gonna hold you up much more longer if you okay. could tell the audience where they can catch you on all the socials what's coming up for you the floor is yours my sweetheart Okay, my name is Tosh Alexander. You can follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, at Tosh Alexander. They're all the same. Please stream my new song, um, Can't Give You a Try. Okay, it's on, available on YouTube. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Pleasure. Okay. Pleasure is ours. Pleasure is ours. La, la, last thing, last thing is, uh, I, you're a Virgo, right? I am. Yeah. Well, I'm a Capricorn. And apparently, I okay. really get I really get on with uh, Virgos and Tauruses. My best friend is actually a Virgo. Yeah, because we're Earth elements. Yeah, we're the best, baby. Yeah, we're, we're, we're Earth elements. We're the, we're the mm -hmm. best, man. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Well, I'll let you go anyway because I know you got more famous shit to do. So, I mean, thank you, Tosh, for spending time with me, and uh, you know, go enjoy the beach, and uh, I'll just envision the next time I come and see you. I mean, I mean, next time I might just come in, a, you know, more of a you know sort of casual outfit. But I thought. Just because it was Valentine's Day yesterday, I thought I'd just go over the whole works for you. With the red tie and stuff, amazing. Thanks for being my Valentine today. Right, thank you. And hopefully the next time you come back to London, we'll, we'll, meet, we'll meet up again. Okay, no problem. All right, and take care of yourself, sweetheart. Take care. Okay.